Hey, what's up, you guys? It's been a while since I've had time to make a video lately, but today what I want to talk about is the Blue Cat Freak Analyst Multi. Um, basically, this is a multi-channel frequency analyzer. And by that, I mean you can put it on all your tracks, and what it'll do is it'll share and link them through the routing matrix that it has, which is actually right here. And basically, it allows you to um, look at their different sources of audio. And, you know, it has the typical Blue Cat audio stuff where you can freeze the tracks, resize the window. You can, uh, can decide the precision that it has, the uh, attack envelope, the release, all that stuff. Basically, this is a plugin that I think is a really useful tool for those who are learning how to mix and for those who are experienced but sometimes have issues where they have some mixes that might need to be heavy in certain frequencies. And because of that, they need to find ways to make room. And this is a great tool to learn how and to see where the buildups could be. So here I have a um, track that um, this was basically for a little independent film. And the whole idea of this is this is a cover of Ticket to Ride. This was supposed to be a kind of dirty, gritty, really lo-fi version. This didn't actually have any bass, guitar, or any uh, drums in, at all. It was just synths, guitars, a couple keyboards, a bunch of vocals, and I think that was about it. So let me see real quick. And yeah, besides that, we have a couple little Foley sound effects and stuff just to go on and make some noise in the background. But anyway, and the reason why I'm using this song is because this was a perfect example of a song that because it's so gritty and lo-fi, there's really not much taking up the high end and really not much at the low lows. So this is an instance where the mix was extremely mid-range heavy. And this is a great way to show how this can be used as a tool for showing you problem areas or showing how I use this to make space for my mix. So let's start off by just opening up a new instance. Whenever you open it up, it starts off like this with its curved routing or the routing matrix set up. And it has both left channel, right channel, channel average, and channel max. Left channel, if it's a mono source, it doesn't matter left or right, it'll just be the same. But if you're doing a stereo source, left is also mid and right is the side because this can also view the left, right, and the mid side. The channel average is basically the average of the two together and I find that to be the most useful for stereo sources because that kind of combines them and gives you a summed idea. And the channel max is basically the channels maxed out and, and that will be the way it reads it. So let's just get straight into it. What you do is you first instantiate an instance, you click on the color and the number, and you just click and you name it. So I believe this was guitars, so we'll name this GTR. And you'll see right there, automatically you have a little thing, and it's been changed. She's got a ticket. And right there you see it. So let's see more of the controls. So as usual, you have the resize buttons right up here in the middle of the buttons section. I usually set it to maximum. You have the on and off, the opacity, the settings, the controls, show control. You have the spectrum view or the difference view. And this lets you choose between showing both of them side to side or up and down. Besides that, you have the resize, you have the routing matrix, you have the synchronized instances, and you have the freeze button. And the freeze button is really cool because it allows you to, to freeze it, and you can zoom in, and as you can see right above where the cursor is up here, it shows you the frequency, the note, the sense value, and the amplitude. I find this extremely useful for finding like really resonant peak frequencies. If you go down here, you have the filled, so it fills the graph, the anti-aliasing filter. You can show the name or hide the name and show the list. You also have this cool little thing, which is the threshold control. She's got a ticket. Which, as you can see from that, basically shows you this threshold that it's going to start detecting. Then you go down here to the bottom. You have push. What push does is it actually puts the settings of this instance into all other instances of the plugin. So you don't actually have to change them all one by one. You have precision, which comes from one all the way to 10. Jeez. Now, 10 is so accurate that it tends to slow down the uh, the metering. So what I do is I keep it to seven. Seven is a really good number and it keeps it really accurate, but still doesn't eat up CPU. Six is good too. Now these little arrows right here push the individual values into every single one. So let's say you want the precision to be different on every single one, but you want the attack envelope, you can do that. Now, what I usually do with my attack envelope is I like to keep in the average level. So I actually have it at 350 milliseconds and then I just click push. Everything else I basically leave the same. You can also adjust the offset for um, level differences if you have a really quiet thing and you need to bring it up. The slope, if you want to really focus in on the detail of the... If you want to focus in on the detail of the high end or the low end. She's got it. Now you just right click to set everything back to normal or alt click 
on a PC and I think believe option click or control click on the Mac. I don't remember exactly. Now I'm going to put an instance of this on all the other tracks. Then I'll name them and I'll come back after that. So first thing you'll notice here, I have an instance open up and another instance opened up. Now, since these were opened up after I had set this, the values are set to their default. This is to show you the push function, how it works. You just click push and it automatically goes right into it and changes all the settings under it. This is very useful and great way to just have everything set up. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you, basically I'm gonna play back the mix and I'm gonna freeze it and show you one by one how I'm using it. All right, so here we go. She's got a ticket. She's got a ticket. Okay, cool. So we're stopping right about there. So here now, if we can see, is we have all the things and I froze it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually hide everything else just because I'm going to be OCD about it. They don't actually show unless you actually assign them to something. But I just like to have them off so I see what is on and what isn't. So let's start off by just stripping it down to the bare essentials. The vocals and the guitars. So the guitars are in the orange. As you can see here, the guitars are all mid-range and they kind of dip down and they don't really go anywhere past 6k. In fact, they don't go anywhere past 5,000. 545 and even then they kind of start sloping down at about 100 but after about 30 hertz they basically just go away they go all the way down to minus 90 dp it's not even audible but the vocal since i have a one of the main vocal is telephone it's mainly right here on this lower mid-range all the way to the kind of like the 1k-ness but all the uh clean the harmony vocals are all taking up that top end they're going from basically from about 1k all the way to uh, about 20k and this is pretty normal from what I'm doing for this song because the uh, the harmonies are the ones that are standing out. They're clean while the lead vocal is actually just telephone the entire time. The uh, If we actually remove the vocal and we just focus on the guitars and I turn on the keyboard in the yellow, we'll see that the keyboard actually has more low end focus than it does top end focus. So basically what this is doing is the guitar and the keyboard is I'm using it to simulate the low end of the bass. So I'm keeping everything as much as I can all the way to again to about 45, 40 hertz. It kind of just dips down. But if you see here, what I did is I let the keyboard have all the low end and then I kind of just dropped it down and had the guitar shine through. And this is how I'm making room in a very mid-range heavy mix. And then let's look at the effects. The effects are basically going to mirror everything, but mostly mirror the vocals. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting off everything above about 10k just to prevent it from getting too sibilant. And I'm cutting off everything from about 100 hertz and down. Again, because there's no bass, I want that low end to give it the body, but I don't want it to get too muddy. So if we actually turn everything back on and we look at it, we're basically seeing that what I'm doing is I'm stacking and I'm making room in different frequency pockets. So right here on the keyboard, there's really nothing going on around um, 444 to about 600. And that's because not only is that kind of mud, but that's where the vocals and the guitar are really going to stand out. And then since the guitar is going to be taking up around here, I'm dipping down a lot more of the keyboards, but I'm also letting the vocal, which is the purple, shine through a little bit more than anything else. And that's because it's being telephone. It's being really compressed and, and you know, just focused on that. While the uh, top end, the guitar just starts sloping down and we see that the vocals are shining. And as we can hear, everything kind of sounds, it sounds busy but it doesn't sound cluttered. Everything's really stacked and mid-range heavy, but it's not too in the way. She says that living with me is bringing her down. there you can kind of see where the uh, harmonies start kicking in how it's all mid-range heavy and then when the harmonies kick in everything gets even more boosted in the mid-range and in the top end and also you can see right here in this orange this little spike this is where the guitar we're having we recorded the guitar feeding back for effect and you can see it so again this is showing you a really great way of actually analyzing your audio and seeing what's going on and because i have the attack envelope set to lower to kind of slow it's very very much on the average side so you're actually seeing what you're hearing which is pretty cool again this is a great tool for teaching you how to learn what to listen to or how to you know like analyze yourself and see am i making room for things in the mix is something building up is that why something's not standing out the way i want it to so this is a great tool and i really love this thing this 
this is also great for um you know if you have multiple guitars if you have a weird honkiness that's going on but it's only going on when everything's going like playing at once you can kind of analyze everything on your buses and see what does need to be taken out where is there a big buildup? and um i find it to be really useful and really really cool um it's great for doing kick bass you know finding where the really predominant frequencies are where you can kind of make room and scoop things out you know you can do some complimentary eq after you've scooped out it's pretty cool um i would highly suggest checking out the demo um if you're learning if you're new or even if you just want it to analyze yourself and to learn more maybe perfect your technique a little better this is a great tool um i actually now own all the blue cat audio stuff so if you guys have any questions about anything else blue cat audio you can always ask me and i'll be more than happy to do a video or you know just talk to you about it so that's it for today hope it was helpful sorry if this ran a little long i just haven't seen any real um videos discussing this plugin very well and i want to do a really in-depth thing and show you how and why you'd be able to use it so hope that helped hope you guys liked it see you later